Hi there, I'm going to be running through a quick tutorial and explanation on what happens to Phantom 4 Pro batteries after sitting for a long period of time. As you can see, both of these batteries don't charge or light up anymore. When you try plugging them on a charger, they don't do anything, and then when you plug them into your drone and try to power up, it doesn't do anything. You may even still have the same issue with this battery, for example, which still has a light, but when you plug it into a drone, it does nothing, and then when you try to charge it, It'll act as if it's charging and then it'll just continue flashing for 16 to 17 blinks, something around that. So the reason for this is these batteries, after dropping to a certain voltage, they will automatically shut off and basically DJI deems them as unusable anymore because the voltage has dropped so low. So basically the battery becomes completely useless and you basically can't use it anymore. You either have to send it to DJI for a replacement or just throw it away or sell it for parts. In this video, I'm going to show you what I do to fix these batteries. Just a discretion that you will need a software that isn't easily accessible to everyone and you also need certain modules to uh, perform this procedure. So let's get right into it. So for the first step, what you're going to try and do is remove the top cover that holds the LED bar inside. On Phantom 4 Pro and advanced batteries, it's quite easy. There's just going to be two screws on each side. But for the Phantom 4 standard batteries, it's quite a bit harder because when you pop it off, there's lots of pins that are holding it into place. And there's also uh, four pins on each corner that are glued in and really lock this top shell in. As you can see, here's the cavities that hold uh, the shell into place, just like that. That's how it would be held into place. But it's going to be quite difficult to remove it because these joints are pre-glued from factory so you're gonna have to use quite a bit of force to pop that shell off and then this is the case only for Phantom 4 standard batteries that you're gonna have that issue after you're done with that you're gonna get access to the LED bar as you can see here and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the Phantom 4 Pro battery You're just going to remove two small Phillips screws. Got a little kit on each corner and then after that you're simply just going to push up and remove the cover. As you can see on the Phantom 4 Pro batteries they're not glued in so you won't have any issues with that. On the Phantom 4 standard battery there's probably about a 90% chance that you'll break those off. The next thing you're going to see is two small, uh, basically metal pins that are used when you screw in the screw to hold it in place. After you've gotten to this point, the next thing you're going to have to do is pry apart the shell. So it's glued in these seams right here, but usually if you just hit these areas a couple times slightly it'll usually start to split the battery apart so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hit these spots just a little bit and then I should be able to start pulling this battery shell so what you're going to want to do next is grab a pair of needle nose pliers and what you're gonna do is set it up in a way like this and then basically just pull the battery shell apart just like that and then it should come out pretty easily but as I said it's glued in so you might need to use quite a bit of force but usually it comes apart quite well. As you can see, these areas are a little bit harder to pull apart. What I could, what I would recommend is just lightly heating them up with a heat gun at about 200 degrees, but don't heat it up too much because when you try to pull it apart, it could deform the shell. If it does crack, that's pretty common. I mean, it wasn't really designed to be taken apart, but that's just the way it is. So for the next step, I'm just using a standard uh, RC charger. I'm actually using a uh, Venom Pro Duo charger. And I've just made set it up to alligator clips. So here on the battery itself, you can see it says battery plus and battery minus. So those are two, the two pads that you need to connect to. So at this point on the charger you want to set it to nickel metal hydrate charge mode and you want to set it up to about 2 to 3 amps. And if you let it run for quite a bit and then on the charger it states that you've passed 15.2 volts, 
That usually means that all the cells in the battery are actually fine. And at this point, it's a hit or miss, but sometimes the battery will actually start operating normally again. And you can just disconnect the clips, put the shell back on it, and then try running it with the original Phantom 4 charger. If it starts charging with the original Phantom 4 charger, then the battery is working as normal and you can continue using it. What I would recommend is just going into the DJI Go 4 app and making sure that the voltage cells are perfect. So they're completely fat, f completely flat, so the voltage uh, in each cell is similar. And if that's not the case, well then at that point, the battery is pretty much useless and you're just going to want to get rid of it. Or another thing that I do is I actually disconnect the circuit that plugs into the batteries and I actually balance charge the battery to make sure that all the cells are perfectly flat again. So now I'm going to run the battery through the charger. So I've charged the battery to about 15.5 uh, volts, which this, the lowest voltage that this battery should ever reach is about 15.2. So that tells me that most of the cells are going to be fine. That means that the voltage in all the cells is pretty good because if one of the cells was bad, we'd be at, at approximately 12 volts. So what I wanna do is disconnect both of these pins next. And during the charging process, if the battery jumped over 15.2 volts, uh, one of your LEDs could have been lit up or if you keep on clicking on this One of your LEDs should at least light up as you can see here one of the LEDs has lit up So what I'm going to do next Is double check. I'm gonna grab a Phantom 4 Pro or Phantom 4 standard charger and plug it in So as you can see this battery had absolutely no lights now You can see that it's actually charging. Well, it was charging and this is the same issue that you're going to have if you had a battery that had one flashing light, but then after a certain period of time, it would just stop charging. As you can see, this battery is doing the exact same thing. Plugged into the charger, it starts charging, but then after a certain amount of time, it just cuts off, or it'll just keep flashing one light at you at a different pace. So if that's the case, then we're going to have to do a couple other things. First thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to disconnect this pin right here completely. So what you need to do is you just need to remove a little bit of this DJI uh, plastic glue and then you should be able to pop this pin right out. So that's exactly what I'm, what I'm gonna do right now. Just like that, the pin comes out. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take my charger. After you disconnect this pin, there is absolutely no going back. The battery will need to be reprogrammed and then there's just nothing you can do about it. Of course, I do offer that service if you wanna ship in your battery. And I also include a 30-day uh, warranty with all the batteries that I service. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up back to the battery. Then I'm gonna take my uh, custom-made balance plug, which is designed for this battery, and I'm gonna install it into the back of the plug that we just took out. So just like that, I'm gonna plug it back in. So now I'm gonna go back to my charger, and I'm gonna turn it into LiPo mode, and I'm gonna get a reading on all the voltage cells. So, I just read the voltage on the batteries and the first cell is at 3.69 volts, the second one is at 3.55, the third one is at 3.7, and the fourth one is at 3.5. So that's quite a big disbalance of almost 0.2 volts in each cell. 
So what I'm going to do with the battery is I'm going to completely charge it to 100% with the LiPo charger, except I'm going to balance every single cell. So the charger itself is going to balance every single cell out till the voltage is perfectly even in between every cell. So as you can see, after letting the battery charge for about uh, 15 minutes, I've been able to flatten out the voltage between all the cells. So now that I've uh, charged the battery quite a bit, I'm going to disconnect the connections that I used to charge the battery. I'm going to disconnect this connection as well that was in the bottom, just like that. Set that aside. I'm going to take the original connector and plug it back in, just like that. So next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a soldering iron, turn it on. At this point, it's not going to be very beneficial to follow along because just to get this setup going, you're going to need a uh, license for a specific program. You're going to need a EV2300 Texas instrument module to communicate with the battery as well as a laptop. So now that my soldering iron has heated up to about uh, 800 degrees, I'm going to take my soldering iron and clean it off. And the three pads that I'm going to be connecting to is going to be the, the ground, the press SCL, and the SDA pin. So I'm going to go ahead and add some fresh solder to those now. So now I'm going to take the module and I'm going to hook up three connections for communication and then after that I'll show you what I'm looking at on the laptop. I'm going to solder on the ground, solder on the SDA, and then lastly the SCL, just like that. So the program that I'm running is UBRT2300 uh, version 5.7.29. You do have to purchase a um, subscription pretty much for the program in order to operate it. So as you can see, I've hooked up the battery to the Texas Instruments EV2300 and I've connected that to the laptop with the, via USB. And as you can see now, the program has recognized the battery as a DJI battery for Phantom 4 Pro and then this is the model of the chip that it's connected to it. So now if I start the main program you can see that uh, the program is running and looking up the information on the battery. So the battery is currently at 29.67% uh, charged and as you can see the cycle count on this battery is only 23 cycles which is honestly pretty much nothing there's no reason for why a battery with this little cycles should have failed like that so now if we read the status registers on the battery we can see right here that the status of the battery is permanent failure as you can see for PF so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop reading the battery I'm gonna unlock the battery and then I'm going to clear the permanent failure error on the battery so now that I've cleared the error I should be able to read the battery status again and as we can see the permanent failure error has went away. So at this point I'm going to disconnect the program completely, disconnect the battery uh, from the Texas Instruments module and then I'll show you what the battery is doing. So now I'm going to take the module and I'm going to unsolder the connections from it once again. This should be quite simple, just three wires. Like 
that. Smoothing out all the solder joints. Perfect. As you can see, this is the exact same battery. Now you can see there's not just one light blinking. It's actually indicating the proper charge level that's on the battery, which is 29%. So now, right on camera, I'm gonna take the Phantom 4 charger and I'm gonna plug it into the battery. And now you'll see that the battery actually does charge. There we go. I plugged it in and now the battery should continue to charge. And as you can see, you don't get a slow blinking light anymore. You don't get any weird flashes. The LEDs don't turn off anymore. It's consistently charging the battery. And I can actually feel that the battery is just a little bit warm, which is normal. So now that I can see that the battery is charging, I'm going to disconnect it. And as you can see, it should power right off the way that it normally would. I'm going to take this battery, I'm going to tuck this uh, thermal sensor back into where it belongs. You don't really need to glue it in, it just needs to be in the proximity of the battery cells. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put the battery back into its cage. So you're going to take this side, the one that has the DJI and the warning on it, not the side that has Phantom 4. You're going to line it up just like this with the side that has the non-rectangular design, non-rectangular cutouts, as you can see this piece does. So I'm gonna just take the battery, set it down in here. There's two slots on each side where the battery, uh, where the main uh, circuit should slide into. So I'm gonna do is set it up like this, take the battery, pry this plastic piece back so I can fit the main connector into place. And it should pop right into place just like that. And then, all I gotta do is just push it in, just like that. Now that that's into place, I'm gonna take the LED bar, I'm gonna take it, slide it into its small slot. Take the other half, as you can see, this piece did get just a little bit bent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flatten that out with some pliers. Just like that, perfectly flat. Take the second part of the housing, and this piece is going to be pointing up just like that, and then this piece is going to be pointing down. And once again, you're going to line up this edge with the outer edge of this shell. So, just like that, should slide in. Push these little tabs down so they line up, and just like that, the battery should click back together, just like that. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take these metal tabs that we took out, put those back into place. Orientation for these also doesn't matter. I think they work perfectly fine both ways, so it doesn't matter. You can't really mix up the direction or side on these. Just put those in. Then you're going to take your shell. You're going to align it with the short piece going with the short side and the longer side with the large dip down. Make sure you align these pins so these pins are pointing perfectly straight and then you're just going to put the shell straight down and you're going to push it in as far as you can just like that last step you're gonna, what you're going to do is you're going to take those two screws that you took out and then you're just going to put those right back in to lock in your upper shell So that's it, pretty much the battery is fully assembled. It went from completely non-working to a fully working battery. As you can see, I'm plugging it back into the charger. And as you can see, it's charging the correct way.